We're here with uh, Tyler Pitchford. He is uh, the Tampa Bay area uh, champion for Hack for Change. Tyler, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Certainly. Um, you told me you are an attorney um, and were a software engineer. Yeah. Uh, tell us your story. Sure. I uh, started programming at a really young age. My dad was a software engineer in the 70s. I programmed for about 20 years, got my bachelor's degree in software design um, from New College of Florida in Sarasota. Ended up consulting and running various companies. Last position was as a CTO in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, after I got my law degree, uh, I actually went back into software. It's the company in Nashville as a CTO and then uh, left that company and came and worked as an attorney in Tampa. I've been here ever since. How long have you been an attorney? Um, I got my bar license uh, 0808 2008. So, um, six years now. Yep, six years now, and then been practicing in Tampa for a little over four, almost five years. And what, what prompted you to uh, organize Hack for Change here? Um, well, this is my co organizer, Doug DePerto. How's it going? Um, Hello, Doug. I was on. I'm recording live here, so. Yeah, I'm doing a video. Excellent. <laughs> but um, I was. Uh, reading Slashdot one afternoon at the office actually and there was a posting about the White House trying to get a national day of civic hacking and federal government support and I was new-ish in the Tampa technology scene and nobody else had decided to sponsor it so I thought it would be good for helping build a community and I figured anything that the White House was going to use the word hack and was going to help the local government build bridges with developers and, and hackers in the area could be only be positive so I started um, I signed up to co-organize or to organize it, and then my paralegal's husband actually was a professor at ITT Tech, so we teamed up and got the facility, and we've been it's our second year now. Oh, awesome! Okay, Doug, you want to tell us something about yourself and about uh, the program here, uh, the Hack for Change program? Sure. Um, about myself, I'm a IT consultant by day, uh, adjunct by night, and uh, basically what we're just trying to do with Hack for Change is make a difference of, of some sort. You know, we would build some apps or make data more accessible to the community. Just you know, do something, do something positive with all the data that's out there. You know, try to give back a little. Uh, today is the last day, right, for yes. for this. Yes. And what what's uh, what's on the program today? What's happening later, uh, later in the day? Let's see. Today, uh, right now, everyone's pretty deep into their uh, application development stuff. Um, right. So they're moving ahead, and then. Later on today, we're going to have, I guess, our, uh, re our review and award ceremony where we go over what was developed, uh, vote on best application and all that. Uh, I think this year was interesting. Uh, last year, we had about four applications get built, and this year, um, everybody teamed up and kind of coalesced to work on one app that they all thought was a good one, which I thought was great. There was, it was kind of funny because this year we had monetary prizes, but everybody kind of teamed up together and got rid of the competitive aspect, which I thought was an interesting dynamic. Very interesting. Um, people now, didn't want to compete, they wanted to build. Do you mind sharing what the app is, what problem the app is going to solve that they're working on right now? Sure, they're uh, building a more accessible real-time transportation app for the bus system. Um, we teamed up with the county this year with the Hillsborough Hackathon and merged the event into one to help address transportation was the main focus. Um, and everybody kind of grabbed onto that and has run with it. So they're they use the app that's available in the area and found it lacking, so they're improving it and making it better. Um, and they're trying to work in, last I understood, but they were trying to work in agony scores for how difficult a certain route would be to get from, say, point A to point B in Tampa versus just driving, which I think is useful to help point out to the government that this route may not be great versus a driving route, maybe we can make an improvement here. And on the flip side, saying to the community, there is a need for better transportation while giving consumers better knowledge on maybe you're better off driving or the bus is a viable option here. So I, I, I thought it was a very creative process. They went through the whole design process. It was very interesting yesterday, actually, to watch awesome. everybody teaming up. Yeah. At some point, will I be able to talk to some some, some of the developers there? Certainly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. everyone here is super Well, I'm not disturbing them, actually. I saw they were very intensely working. No, they're, they're definitely very involved. Um, I mean, it's very community-oriented and everybody's super happy to talk about everything. So. I don't think you'd have any problem right. interviewing several um, of them. Okay. Uh, one one other question I had in mind was any possibility we might see the Google car, self-driven cars in this in, in the Tampa? city? In uh, you probably would have to talk to the state legislature, I would guess. I would love to see them. Um, I'm sure Doug would too. I believe Commissioner Sharp was mentioning that on Thursday at his press event. Is the hope to 
So if they see Google out here, so it'd be great. I know yeah. it's on their minds. All right. We okay. would love it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks Thank so you. much. Pleasure.